Hey there, sign folk. Hope everyone's doing well. Um, today, I'm going to go over some sign shop must haves. Um, these are some of my uh, most used uh, hand tools. And uh, I figure I'd kind of do about 10, 11 ish plus, minus, whatever. Some of these other things might kind of get thrown into the mix. But uh, these are tools that I use almost every day that make my life so much easier, especially in the sign environment. Some things may apply to you, some things may not. Hopefully it helps you. I don't know if you're uh, anything like me, but I like watching other people, uh, you know, make signs and I'm, you know, seeing I'm like, well, that's a neat way of doing stuff. Maybe I'll try it that way. So, you know, different tools come in different uh, scenarios. Um, so hopefully this uh, helps you guys out. So stick with me. This is gonna be my top 10 plus-ish uh, most used hand tools. All right, guys, so the first one is, uh, may seem um, pretty simple, but uh, obviously everyone has tape measures. Um, the thing that makes this one special, um, this is called a center point tape measure. Um, and essentially what it does is there are two sets of numbers, one on the top and one on the bottom. Um, so if you're out on the field measuring something and um, you get uh, to the point where you are at um, you're measuring a sign and you need to figure out the center point. That's exactly what this tape measure does. So 42 and a half, you can do the math in your head and generally it'll take me a couple seconds to compute, whether you break out your phone, use your calculator, whatever it is. But the beauty of this tape measure is, so your top mark is your actual measurement and the bottom mark basically designates where the center point of that, um, Measurement would be it makes it really simple pull it across. You know where your measurement is go ahead and hit your mark there There you go. You can measure off of that um, Again center point tape measure. They're about 20 bucks uh, And uh, pretty much available at any sign supplier the next tool that I like to use is um, This is uh, this is by geek wraps and it's the power slam tape essentially. It's a fabric um type of material uh, tape measure. And the beauty is it has uh, magnets on the ends, one on the uh, beginning of the one, and I believe this is a 10 or 12 foot measure, and it has another magnet on the, uh, on the end of it. So what it does is essentially, um, if you're measuring vehicles, and um, you, know, you want to get a um, scale um, drawing, or at least work one to one in your design software, these things are great because I just put the magnet on, say, a door on this side, and then I extend it all the way out so that the magnet is, um, you know, sticking, make sure that it's taut. And so when I zoom into my artwork, I can work off of one-to-one. -one. Um, and, and it's pretty accurate. It's not 100%, but it works really, really well for those applications. And the other thing that this is great for, um, in the past, when uh, we did boat wraps, um, you know, this actually conforms um, to the hull. It makes it a lot easier to, to measure. You can't really do that with a traditional tape measure because it bends and it buckles and when it does that it uh, takes uh, I guess eighths of inches away or half is half of inches away. Um, really messes up your measurement. So this is one of those things that uh, I always keep in my pocket when I go out to uh, sites or whether I'm doing vehicles or whether I'm doing a boat or just something with an irregular shape. Um, works out really well. You don't necessarily have to get one of these. I think you can get like these from the, uh, you know, from like a Walmart store or something like that. You don't necessarily have to use the power magnets, but the power magnets come in handy. Um, again, like I said, when you're scaling up vehicles and uh, working one-to-one -one in your design software. And uh, so the next thing that I'm kind of going to go over are uh, knives. Um, everyone uses some sort of knife cutting device, whatever it may be. I personally, I have four knives um, that I have at my um, reach pretty much at any time. Um, two of them are the uh, Ulfa type blades. These are stainless. Um, each one has a different purpose, at least in my mind. So the one with the nine millimeter, the uh, AB blades, um, these are a little less sharp. I use these mainly for cutting, uh, you know, media, just doing quick slices of stuff like that. Um, it generally stays in my pocket and I like it because it is retractable. So it's always readily available. This is the 
1160B blade. Um, this one is obviously a lot longer. This blade is much more precise. And I like the longer blade. It gives me a little bit more control, whereas this one is a little bit less control um, for certain situations. So I generally keep both of these in my pocket when I'm working outdoors because number one, they're retractable and you're not gonna stab yourself and bleed all over the place. But um, you know, the, the blades are readily available and they last forever. Uh, let's see here, the next ones. So obviously a lot of people use the number 11 X-Acto blades. I also use the number 11 X-Acto blades. Um, but I personally always have two um, handy. Um, one is basically always going to be a brand new blade, and one is going to be one that the tip is actually wore down. And I weed all my vinyl with um, with the wore down number 11 blades. Um, it's just I know that you can use pins and needles, and people have tweezers and all sorts of stuff. And some people even use the uh, the Ulfa blades. I, I personally, this is my go-to. So this is what I weed with, and when I'm working with die cut, um, this is my trimming blade. Um, just works a lot easier, um, find a little bit more control. Obviously you hold it closer to, um, to the paper that you're cutting. Um, so I like to have two of those handy at all time when I'm weeding die cut vinyl. And another thing, since we're on cutting, is a good pair of scissors. Um, these, um, through years and years and years, I, uh, I've always had the habit of using an exacto blade when I was cutting the uh, cutting down my die cut vinyl and one of the girls that we had hired um, she picked up a pair of scissors I've never seen that technique and we never trained her or anything she just I don't understand how it happened but she used scissors and so from there on out she trained everyone else to use scissors and um, I held off for the longest time I was always um, with the mindset of because I have this blade in my hand, I'm not going to put this blade down just to pick up a pair of scissors. I can always do it faster and more efficiently with a blade. Um, but I found out that as I get older, my lines aren't as straight um, as they used to be. If I'm using a knife and this slips off and I nick a letter or something like that, that means I've got to go all the way back. And so I've nicked enough letters that I kind of get frustrated. And so then I started, once I'm done weeding, I put the blade down. And when I do my final trimming around my weed border um, or anything else, I use scissors. These specifically are Westcott Titanium Nonstick Blade. These have been by far the best scissors. Um, I think they're about uh, you know, 10, 11 bucks, got them from Walmart. Um, you can adjust the pressure. The handle's nice and, uh, nice and comfortable. It's got this rubber inset there. Um, but these by far have lasted the longest the most comfortable and probably the sharpest by far instead of buying cheap pairs of scissors. So now I'm gonna move on to rulers. Um, another helpful thing that I use almost every day are these, um, these are the Image One Impact or Big Blue um, rulers. They make these in, I know of three, I believe they're four. So they make a 28, they make a 40, and they make a 52, and I'm almost positive they make like a 98 or a 100 inch. Um, I've seen it. I know a, another friend that has one and I've seen it. And I'm like, holy crap, where that thing it was huge. But anyways, um, these things are lifesavers. Um, so not only are they non-stick on the bottom, they're rigid extruded aluminum, anodized blue. They look pretty cool too. Um, you know, they've got the uh, little hole for hanging, kind of keep them out of your way if you want to keep them up on the wall instead of keeping them on the table. I prefer to keep them on the table because I'm always grabbing them. When I'm doing my digital prints and my crop marks are out on the side, I'll always put one of these down, crop mark to crop mark, so instead of using my scissors, I'll grab my AB blade from Ulfa, and that's basically the situation that I'd use it in, and I'd just do a clean sweep down through there. Um, it had this, this curved lip to where when you're cutting, and your blade is coming down here, if the blade accidentally slips, this guide actually deflects the blade, so hopefully you don't come across knuckles or anything. I've lost a couple knuckles. It's not fun. They essentially have... Uh, two different styles of these rulers. One obviously is blue and the other one's purple. So if you're all trying to figure out what the difference is between the two, so this one, the big blue, is just extruded aluminum and this is the raw edge and this is what you basically cut off when you're cutting. The purple one has a stainless steel um, piece of round bar inside that does not wear down. 
So you're constantly cutting, constantly cutting, constantly cutting. Um, the purple one will never wear down, whereas the blue one will. Like I said, if you get you a new blade and uh, you know you kind of score into that aluminum, and yeah, you can cut aluminum. Like I said, I've seen it. It's, uh, it's pretty brutal, actually. There's some spots there that need uh, touched up. But anyways, so that's the difference. So the purple one has the stainless steel, uh, or maybe it's steel, steel bar, round bar in it. I don't know if you can actually see that. that. You can kind of see the, uh, the round bar there. And obviously, you can see that one doesn't. But it's wore down pretty good. But it still saves your fingers. And the other thing that I like to have handy is just a regular metal square. Um, this is good for, in this instance, I use this for cutting magnets. So essentially, I put one end down, square it up with the bottom side of the magnet. And then this way, I can cut square. So I cut my 12 square um, pieces of magnet, magnetic material, whatever they may be. So that's the start of that. Then we gotta move over to the next ones. Okay, so moving on. So the next thing that I use a lot of, and you don't take a lot of thought into this stuff, but having these tools handy makes all the difference in the world. Um, we do a lot of core plast signs. Core plast is cheap. Um, you know, it weather's good outdoors, indoors, outdoors. Um, you know, yard signs, temporary signs, birthday signs, whatever. You know, everyone uses coroplast. Um, one thing that we used to do a lot was when we had a sheet of coroplast, obviously we'd take out our old utility knife and we'd cut straight lines. And I used to cut them with, uh, with T-square. So T-square worked great, but then it generally requires two people, one person to hold the one side and then the other person to hold the other side because you had to put so much pressure down that the T-square doesn't move to keep your cut square. So, uh, years and years ago, um, we're like, well, let's go ahead and try one. It's called a Cora Claw. And essentially what it does is at least for one direction on the Coraplast gives you very straight cuts. They're not perfect, but they're a lot better than what you're gonna get out of a utility knife. Um, essentially, the Cora Claw, I'm gonna zoom in on here, or at least I'm gonna walk up. So the Cora Claw has two pins here. And down here on the bottom is a blade. And in between here is a blade as well. So essentially you put this first pin in the flue. This one rides on the bottom. And again, this one's just for four millimeter Coro. Let me show you how it works. Slide it in one of these holes. And essentially those blades on, on both sides, you know, it's so much easier than, than uh, using the utility knife and just cutting that stuff down. So uh, Coro Claw is almost an essential tool um, like I said, it's great for cutting stuff down one direction. Um, you still got to use the old utility knife unless you have uh, some sort of wall um, cutter or something like that. Accu cutter, I think is what they're called. I'm not sure. No, it's not accu cutter. I'm sorry. Uh, pin, uh, whatever. Doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, Cora Claw. This one's made by Sawtrax. Again, about 20 bucks. Um, it's not one of those things that you need all the time, but when you have it in your uh, toolkit, um, definitely comes in handy and saves you a lot of time and space. Um, when you're trying to cut down substrate, um, especially, you know, core stuff. So look into that. Another thing that I use every day, um, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten times a day or better, is my Swiffer Duster. Um, this thing is great for, number one, uh, cleaning substrate before you letter it. Um, dusty vinyl, such as I have. Um, cleaning off equipment because it gets very dusty in here. Monitors, keyboards, um, table surfaces. This thing gets used any time that I think that there might be dust or dirt or even before I, uh, I let her stuff. I, don't I go through about one a month. Um, works really, really good. So um, again, before laminating prints, um, you know, cleaning tables, cleaning electronics, screens, equipment, anything that dust could accumulate, I definitely use that before I put any vinyl down. Um, the next thing that comes in handy is a grommet press. Um, this is a self-piercing um, grommet machine. Um, this one is not brand specific. I ordered it from Grimco. Um, they label this as a self-piercing grommet machine. And um, if you've done banners um, in the past, like most of us started out, and I know I did, I went to Lowe's and I got the grommet packs for like 10, 11 bucks. And um, so you have the, uh, 
I think you have the two die set and then you have the punch itself. Um, and so after you hem the thing, so then you need a two by four and we put the banner on the two by four and knock the hole out and then we put the tab in or the, uh, the, 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 uh, the die in for the, uh, for the grommets. Smacking things down, they were such a pain in the ass. Um, we upgraded to this one. It, like I said, it's not brand specific. And I think we've had this for probably, oh no, um, maybe five, six years, something like that. Um, Rimco had a name for this. It's not Hiker. Um, it's not, um, what's the other brand name? It starts with an S. I, it's kind of slipped my mind. Anyways, uh, self-piercing grommet machine. If you do banners, um, it's almost a must have. It makes things so much easier. Um, just line the, uh, the banner up where it needs to be. Um, you put one grommet in the self-piercing in the top, and then you get my fat hand there, and then you put one of these guys down on the bottom. Essentially, all you have to do is press down, minimal press, and there you go. Grommet. Super easy, super convenient. You can knock out a banner really, really quick with these. I know that these self-piercing um, grommets are available in three colors. So you get what's called nickel. They're not called silver, they're called nickel. And then you get brass and you can get black ones as well. And of course, like I said, different colors accent the banners and just kind of helps elevate whatever you're selling. Um, they come in really handy. And so the next two things, let me move this stuff out of the way. So the next thing that I use almost on a daily basis. So I know that some of you guys and ladies have, uh, have seen my other videos of the ACM signs that, uh, that I make and I send out a, uh, for Etsy. And a lot of times those customers will ask for holes for hanging. And before, like most people, you just like, ah, oh, just take a drill and go ahead and just drill through it. Um, the problem, unless you're on a drill press, it's really hard to get a nice smooth cut through ACM. Um, high speed drill, nice sharp bit, you know, blah, 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 nice setup. And I did that for the longest time. Customers never really complained of the aesthetics of the hole. As long as the hole was there, they didn't care. They didn't have to do it. They're happy. But um, what I found out was um, after some research, I came across this company called Roper Whitney. And they manufacture a handheld hole punch. And um, so this thing is good for, uh, I think it's 063 aluminum. And I know it does um, three millimeter ACM, no problems, um, because I do it all the time. The company includes, several size dies for different size holes. Um, I personally keep a quarter inch punch in my die at all times. Um, it's not complicated to change it, but because of the amount of signs that I do, um, it's just easier for me of changing dies out. And I'll show you why. So the hole punch, actually comes with this base or maybe the base is extra that I bought I can't remember I know that they offer it because it fits really really well and it's more of a cradle I guess and uh, so what I did is I got a hose clamp and I basically hose clamped the punch to the holder and then I fabricated a piece of wood and this is a seven and a half by 16 it's a piece of pine it's the flattest piece that I could get worked really good and I got some uh, little standoffs. These are some nylon standoffs. And I've, I don't know if you can see back there, but I've got a washer to make sure that this top level is level with the bottom of the punch. And so I made this table to set the signs on. So essentially, the only thing that you have to do is just slide this in, punch it in, and so there's the hole. Not that one, that one. But they're all the same, right? Anyways. Um, Great handy little tool, saves a lot of time, saves a lot of mess. Um, it's handy because it just goes back on underneath the shelf. When I'm done with it, when I need it, it just comes back up. Super easy, doesn't take any effort to punch these holes. And again, they offer um, different dies for different sizes and they all work really, really well. Um, I've had this set up for probably two or three years. 
Um, I did have an issue with when I was changing dies out, and this is why I don't change dies anymore. So one of the um, one of the dies on the bottom actually cracked inside of the housing, and I could not get it out. I called Rubber Whitney, and they said, "Oh my God, we're terribly sorry. That's not the uh, the type of um, you know equipment that we send out. We're going to send you a brand new one, free shipping, the whole nine yards. Let me keep the old one, although it's rendered pretty much useless, um, but it still have all those extra dies." So if you're looking into a hole punch, um, again, it'll, I know it'll do up to 063. It might do 080, it might take a little bit of force, it might wear down the dies a little bit, I'm not exactly sure. And there are other um, hole punches that will do much thicker metal. Um, I just didn't see the need for it, obviously. I think this press was, um, I think it was in the neighborhood of about 150, 200 bucks. So it was very reasonable as far as I was concerned. Um, fit my budget well. Again, the company that makes this is called Roper Whitney. Look them up and uh, I don't have an exact model number, but I can actually find it for you and I will put the link down in the description for you guys. How about that? So that is that. So that's something uh, that a lot of people do if you're into signs, uh, aluminum, hole punch, thing is golden. Try it. It works great. And my last little piece de resistance is a corner rounder. Um, my corner rounder is made by AccuCutter.com and if you go to their website at least as of today, today is October 20 something. It's the end. I know Halloween is coming up in a couple days. Anyways, I went to their site to try to get some pricing on these and um, their site is down. They're actually being revamped uh, but I will put the link um, down below in the uh, in the description back to this product but i'm just going to go ahead and cover this as well so corner rounder um anytime that i sell a 12 by 18 18 by 24 just a flat sign nothing that doesn't have to go on the cnc just a square edge sign i always 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 round the corners um not only to me is it more visually and uh, uh appealing um, there's a liability that I found out through years. So if you just have a regular aluminum sign, um, you put it up there on the freaking fence, say it's in a pool area, it becomes a liability. If someone bumps into that, the corners are sharp. So, um, yeah, unless the customer specifically asks that they don't want rounded corners, um, then, uh, I don't do it. But any other time, any square sign, it always gets a rounded corner. And so when I was on the lookout for something that could round corners, I tried to figure out how to do them by hand. I looked at all sorts of gimmicks and gadgets and anything you could think of. Well, I came across these AccuCutters. Now they make smaller, um, smaller units and I think they're blue. They're a little bit older, but they still work really, really well. Um, but this one, I, I went with um, this model and this one, this one is a, it's called a Quartermate Plus, and this is the CM60 table. Now the beauty of this is you can change the dies in and out. Um, that's why I went with this model. Um, so I went with something that I knew that I was gonna be doing, you know, 063, 080, aluminum, um, you know, ACM, that kind of stuff, core plast, it'll pretty much cut anything. So I opted to go um, with something a little bit stouter and I knew that I was going to want to change my dies out. So I originally went with a three quarter inch rounded corner and um, I knew that I would want to do an inverted uh, cove cut, I guess is what you would call it, um, type of die. And um, so that's why I went with this model. Uh, I, I mean, it wasn't cheap. It was kind of like a bitter pill to swallow just for a corner rounder. I think I've got 450 bucks into this thing. But again, this is one of those things that when you need, you don't even think about it, you know, and it kind of sets you apart from everybody. You know, square corner, the corners are nice and rounded. Everything looks thought out. It doesn't look like an afterthought. Um, I, I just think that it helps. And again, from a liability standpoint, from a liability standpoint, the uh, aluminum edges um, can be sharp. Um, so that is, uh, that is my corner rounder. Now, I also have another tip for you. So before I could ever justify spending that kind of money on a corner rounder, um, we actually, we started off with this little guy here. So we did a lot of magnets and obviously this thing won't cut, um, it won't cut aluminum, but it'll cut the crap out of some, uh, some magnetic material. Um, this is just a little X-Acto um, corner rounder from Walmart. 
think it was like six, seven bucks. It still works great. I still use it on the magnets, sometimes where um, the three quarter is just too much. Um, I think the dies for this are about uh, 200 bucks, somewhere in that area. So again, it's not like I have a, um, an arsenal of, of different dies. I basically tell people I can do a three quarter and that is what it is. But on the magnetic signs, again, you always want to round the corners. Um, so we use this little, or we, I, whatever, we use this little corner rounder here. And this guy probably looks about, um, I'd say it's a good half inch round. Works really, really well. So if you can't really justify this and you're doing some magnetic signs, instead of going this route, if you're just getting started, these things work great. Like I said, I try them. And uh, they also make other uh, dies and everything, but you can look around and basically find those. So again, I hope that helped you guys out. That was kind of like my top 10, 12, 20-ish. I don't even know how many I covered, but these are my mostly used hand tools. Um, I hope that it uh, helps you guys out. And uh, again, I'm almost up to 800 subscribers. Thank you, thank you, everyone that watched, everyone that tunes in, your comments, your suggestions. I, I love it all, and I really take it to heart. Thank you guys for watching. Um, but uh, I really, really, I'm gonna try to get to 1,000. And again, once I get to 1,000, um, obviously like everyone else, I'm gonna do some sort of giveaway. Um, I'm all ears. Let me know your suggestions, um, you know, whether it be media, vinyl, um, you know, hardware or something like that. I'm gonna give some stuff away. So if you guys don't mind, help me get to a thousand subscribers. Um, that's kind of like my pinnacle point. My watch hours have gone through the roof. I'm great there. I, I thank you all so much for uh, tuning in, watching these videos, listening to me jabber. Uh, again, hopefully this stuff helps you out. Maybe it'll inspire you to, you know, try something different or, you know, uh, pick a tool up. But uh, until then, guys, y'all take care and uh, we'll see you next time.